Hello everyone. Um, it's late at night. I've had quite a day. So, I'm uh, shooting footage for my upcoming week's worth of content, and uh, we're going to be doing some L.A. Noir today. Um, I, uh, I've had a lot of computer problems all day, which is why you saw the hiccup there at the beginning of the stream, the broadcast, if you were watching on Twitter or Twitch. But, um, basically I've had multiple blue screens of death. I had to roll back my computer to previous restore points. All because I'm trying to figure out a way to broadcast and record from the same computer while not capturing my face in the recorded footage. It's, it's an entire other world <laughs> out there when it comes to setting up all of the different broadcast settings. So I haven't quite figured it out. Actually, hold on. Is that bright? It's a little bright, man. Really helps out. Look at this. It's really bright, hold on. It's a little better, yeah. Yeah, got a brand new light. I figure I'll test it out today. Um, I've noticed that uh, in my most recent setup, my face is a bit dark since you've got me from the side and I'm not close to my bright monitor and I've got a lot of flashing lights. So I got a new light. It's connected to my dashboard. I can turn it on and off. Pretty cool. Yeah. It's the simple things, right? All right, uh, people are finally in the chat. Let's say hi, Woodman. Oh wait, says hi Oxhorn. Hi there, Woodman. Rue Tara says hi Oxhorn. Good to have you here. Yogi Yogi Diesel says sweet. Is last ninety seven says hi sir. Woodman says I played Fallout seventy six for the first time today. Well, I hope you really enjoyed it. Magic Chipmunk is here. Grievous Reborn. Spartan K. Snapcone. Big Al. Fangirl Sulio. Sulio, forget, uh, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. And is is last says uh, nice Robux, yeah. Mogster uh, subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much, Mogster. Yeah, this is not an official stream. This is this is Oxhorn after dark. So I put the kids to bed. I'm not broadcasting on YouTube. I'm on Twitch. We're laid back here on Twitch, you know. Uh, so I'm uh, trying to figure out a way to. Um, to record this footage and since I have to use it for a lore video I can't have my face in it so what we are going to do is I'm not going to be able to have a face cam during the uh, the live stream I might be I might pop it on every now and then but I'm gonna have to disable it for most of the live stream all right where's my cigar It's a rum and coke night tonight. Ah, cheers. All right, let's get to the game. We're doing Elysian Fields today, a great arson case. Make sure I am recording, and I am. Now, let's move that bad boy over there. It's frustrating because I can record separate audio tracks, but I can't not record certain layers in the video, which is frustrating. Okay. A walk in Elysian Fields. All right, gonna have to toggle the cam. There we go. Now 
BN Meadow says, Hawks, have you seen the articles about a possible Bethesda game leak on Amazon? I sent you the leak via Twitter. Probably nothing, but still interesting. I have seen it, um, but it's, I mean, we don't, we don't have any information. It's like game one, game two, game three. All right, hold on a minute. I'm sorry, but I'm getting way too much hitching. So one of the reasons I really wanted to make sure all of my streaming was done on this computer is because um, in my last lore video, I don't know if you noticed, no one left a comment about it, so I don't know if it's a big deal. But in my last video, there was a lot of hitching. Um, and it was just, you could really see it clearly when a character would move quickly across the screen horizontally, because he'd like skip a few frames. <laughs> it happened a few times with Cole, and it just bugs the snot out of me. So I made some changes to my game launcher. And, um... They helped a little bit, but not a whole lot. And uh, the one major difference that I did last time is I was recording fr uh, uh, the the version without my face cam directly to the hard drive of my gaming PC. And I figured, well, the CPU was probably working over, uh, working hard. And, um, that must have been where all the hitching came from, but I'm not, I'm not recording to this PC anymore. So I don't understand why all of that, all that hitching. I mean, I don't know if, if you see it or not, or if it's just me. No one is saying anything. Uh, all right, well, let's take a look at my task manager. What am I even running that I can turn off? Um, I'm only using 4% CPU, 4% memory. I could turn off Firefox, but then I wouldn't be able to read your chat on this machine. Um, I mean, there's nothing else. There's nothing else I could turn off. Everything else is consuming just such a small amount of resources. Well, let's make sure that I've got the, the correct... Here, here's what I'll do. LiDAR says, I saw it, but I saw it as the charm, the charm of Fallout 3. My friend, I'm, I'm talking about a completely different game. I've been publishing my Fallout 3 content without hitches, by the way. Smooth, buttery 60 frames per second, thank you. It's L.A. Noir that I can't get to play without um, frame hitching. All right, I don't have anything in the command line, so I put it into the shortcut. Let's try that. Let's um, open the shortcut file location. Let's open up the properties and under comments. Let's remove that and put it in here. Negative NPD, negative STR, negative NONV. Then we'll remove those from the shortcut executable or shortcut shortcut and then save save those settings okay closing all my folders everything is turned off except for firefox because i have to have the chat and launch the game all right cross your fingers that we reduce as much hitching as possible Fallout Shorty says, I could see it with the last L.A. Noir vid. Yeah, it's, and it's not just me. Um, everybody pl trying to play L.A. Noir in 2019 on Windows 10 all right, is having a really hard time with the hitching. It's just, um, it's, it's part of the game. And there are a number of tricks we can try to do to reduce it. And I'm trying to do those as well. But... <laughs> Moira says, are you using NVIDIA cards? Yeah, you can take a look at the description of uh, my live stream or, or the in the description below. I have links to the PC part picker lists for both of my computers, my streaming and my gaming rig. So, Fallout Shorty says, I do think it's part of the game. Yeah, it might be unavoidable, which is really disappointing because it's such a beautiful game. 
and it just detracts from the game so much. All right, here's the moment of truth. This big animation is what really tells me whether or not it worked. Okay, that's better. Hold on a minute, something failed big time. Try that again. Okay, that toggled right. And then I can't toggle it back? It's not working. Hold on. No, it's not working. Ugh. I hate technology sometimes. All right, well, I can't have the, the camera on anyway, so let's just uh, turn it off. Okay, these it's at least still work. I can go full, I can go AFK, got my 4K stream. Although I should probably rename it because I'm no longer streaming in 4K, huh? Okay. Let's head on over to Arson Desk. A walk in Elysium Fields. Here we go. All right, cross your fingers. Ox, do you go back and rewatch your streams? No, I never rewatch my old live streams. Uh, I was there for most of it, so I, uh, I tend to just keep going. Uh, Ox, do you, your YouTube channel is awesome. Keep up the great work, my dude, says Kobakan. Thank you so much. Monster says Eagle Scout. That's awesome. How did you know I was an Eagle Scout? Have I ever, I don't recall ever talking about that on the program. Ah, oh, did you see that? Oh. Uh, let's play that again. There was a big pop-out glitch at the very beginning. I don't know if you noticed that, but you could see underneath the build building, and then all of a sudden the guy pops in. That has nothing to do with my settings, by the way. That's all the game. Let's try it again. This, this happened last time, too. I had to restart it like this last time to remove that effect. Fallout Shorty says the game has given me quite a few issues as well, Ox. I don't know what it is, but it's not just you. Okay, good. Don't pop in. No, no, no. Yes, yes. Okay. No pop in this time. Hitching. I'm seeing... Not bad, not bad. This is the big one, this big zoom out. Oh, it's so much better. Oh, a little bit right there. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit. But it's so much better than it was. Okay, I'm glad I restarted. Horizontal fire, movement, bad yeah. One. At least four Vicks. Get out there and find out what you can. The address is 650 North Hobart. C 
650 North Hobart. That's him. That's the best we could do for policemen in the city? Oh man, I hate all of their new comments. <laughs> that bum took a swipe at me, I put him down with my staff. Now they're no longer happy about Cole Phelps. They no longer like the guy. And that, that this guy doesn't like to do banter. Roy well, Earl does all this train. banter walking uh, down to the, the car every was, single time we have a new case. Nice but this guy, guy, Herschel, he just doesn't so talk. He's not a big talker. All right, Herschel, take us there. You know the way. You can drive. You hear about Rancho Escondido? Are we having a conversation, Biggs? Okay, fuck it. Forget I. I'm teasing you, Herschel. Tell me about it. Well, the new housing development is a couple of weeks from completion. Burnt to the ground last night. The GIs are ready to move in this weekend. The developer's gonna have some very angry customers. Mobster says I'm watching episode 416 right now of Scotch and Smoke Rings. You talk about getting the Rifleman Mare Patch. Wow. I did talk about it then, I guess. Yeah, that was years ago. Man, I was 18 years old. We arrive at the house fire at 11.43 a.m. Suburban Redevelopment Fund. And who do we got? Carruthers. Oh no, that means bodies. You guys better see this. I hope you have strong stomachs. I remember this. This is a really disturbing scene. All right. So just a warning. I'm going to stop here on the porch. We're talking crispy bodies, some of which are children. Very disturbing. All right. Moving in. Do you have a name? Morelli, Mike. We recovered a picture of the family. Okay. Anything else? Be honest, I just got here, Phelps. Best you talk to Lynch. He's the expert. Doesn't make any sense. Why aren't they scattered around like the rest of the debris? I think they've been moved. Ooh. I think someone moved them after the explosion and before the fire. Can you explain that, please? I'm almost positive the cause of death is asphyxiation due to gas inhalation. Look at the parts of their bodies that aren't scorched. The coloring around the fingertips is typical. It wouldn't have felt a thing. I think the fire damage is post-mortem. I think someone moved him into this room after the explosion. It still doesn't make any sense. Why would you run into a burning building? Oh, okay. I remember when I played this part of the game for the first time. This this is what almost made me just walk away. I was like, you know what? I don't like the way this story is going. I don't like the arson desk. <laughs> I'm upset what they did to Cole. And now we've got crispy bodies. But I, 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 I got through it. All right. What are they doing? Prayer effect is from the fire. The muscles and tendons contract. You catch all the good ones, folks. Brian says, uh, bad follow dad joke here. What's a Marlurk's favorite fruit? Crab apples. <laughs> he says, blame a fellow 76 YouTube streamer, Captain Noob, for that one. All right, well, he can take all credit. Big Al says Herschel might not be into small talk, but he's willing to give Cole respect as a caseworker. Closest thing to support Cole can get. No, I'm with you. I'd rather have Herschel compared to Roy. I mean, sure, Roy had snarky comments and he was funny, but Herschel's a better man. Oh, and there's the family photograph. You ever think about how many people have died in this world and how big heaven would have to be to accommodate them, Biggs? No, I have not. Show some respect. Wow. Herschel just slams him down. But it's not Cole's fault. He's in a tough spot. It's normal to think about the end of things, afterlife. <clears throat> when you think of all the faces nature has just generated, 
And then here we are looking at these four. Find anything interesting? All right, let's see. What are there? It's our boy. I think he watches the fires. I think the Sawyer fire went wrong. But what about the guy we have in jail, Phelps? He got the wrong guy. That doesn't explain why he ran into a burning building. What would make anyone do that? Guilt. For the fires? For his mistake. This guy wants to burn houses, not families. He expects the houses to be empty. He was trying to redeem himself. He probably thought they'd be happier together. You are one very disturbed individual, Phelps. I know you had it rough lately, but you should start to compartmentalize your thoughts. He Whoa. could be right. Can you come up with an alternative explanation? I'm sure it's the same guy. Are you telling me that some son of a bitch murdered these people, the whole family, and arranged them here like Cupid dolls? It might fit, Cole, but I don't think we could ever prove it. There's very little evidence. Oh. Evidence? Albert, check out the hot water system. Make sure we're dealing with the same M.O. Sure, Phil. So I'll get back to you. Leave the rest to us, Cole. You better find out what's eating pigs. How much of these people are we inhaling? That one just sort of vaporized. Ah, oh, oh, it's just awful. I don't blame, I mean, Biggs, he's a professional. He should be able to handle it. But, I mean, come on. There are some things that you just, no amount of training can prepare you for. Followed Shorty says, can't wait till the next Metro stream. Don't get me wrong. I love LA Noir. Anything you do, Ox is the best. I'm just loving Metro. No, I am as well. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be getting into Find anything Metro. interesting? Okay, now we need to find clues. I think we found everything in here. Let's explore the rest of the house first, though. Uh, probably not interesting. Hmm. Don't think this is any use to us. Islasses97 says, I finally got my girlfriend to watch your channel, and she loves it as much as I do. Well, you flatter me. I'm so glad that you two can watch my channel together. Bringing people together, that's what Oxhorn does. Hmm, what's this, a flashlight? Don't think this is anything. You know what, if I recall, this is a really big house with nothing in it. Baseball. Yeah, that's not going to be anything either. Oh. I'm trying to remember. If I recall, there was something in the basement but we don't need it until later. Okay. Nothing significant. Hold on a second, let me go down. I remember this taking me forever and it was infuriating because I kept trying to find clues and uh, I couldn't find anything. Then again, the music isn't playing, so we're in the wrong spot. Maybe we shouldn't be down here. Yeah, I remember now. All right, let's go back up and go outside. I think we come back here later. The problem is, do I talk to Herschel now? Oh, we get a cutscene. Okay. So something finally got to you. You want my help, pretty boy? You got it. You keep riding me, and you won't be pretty much longer. We can get this guy, Herschel. You think you've seen everything, Phelps? I was with the 2nd Marines at Bella Wood. The things that went on in that farmhouse. My own guys, on fire, screaming for a way out. You're not gonna get this guy. There's gonna be no photos and no citations. We're gonna kill this miserable fuck. And the story. Oh, ho, ho, Herschel. <laughs> I like Herschel. Remember the list from the travel agent? Sure. The Morellis were winners, too. Their name was on that list. Oh. 
Christ. We should take a look around, work the neighbors, see what they know. I'll go across the street. Okay, I'll try this side. So I'm gonna have to do a flashback here. I haven't done this for years. I'm gonna have to do a flashback here, showing the You don't look like a fireman, son. I heard this is a triple homicide. Is that true? We'll need to check that. Wait a minute, I'm trying to remember. All right, it's o uh, cutscene is over. Let's do a perimeter sweep. Let's see if we can find. Let's see if we can find the water heater. Because if it's the same MO as the last one, then we should find the water heater lying around here in the yard. I mean, there is all of this. Well, that's from the that's from the fire truck. There it is. Evidence marker C. Insta heat. What do you know? Looks what like do we the got? same model. Reginald Varley again. But Reginald Varley is in prison. We put him there in our last episode. Can't be Reginald Varley. So we did get the wrong guy. Uh, LiDAR says, uh, Hey, Oxhorn, have you played any of the Grand Theft Auto series? Because if not, you should try them. Start with five. It's full of story and action. I played four when it came out, the Russian one. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was all right. I guess I'm just not big in a Grand Theft Auto. It's not my scene. Oh, newspaper cutscene. Here we go. <laughs> Housing development burns. Ex-serviceman irate. As GI houses raised, Rancho, Rancho Escondido on Fountain Ave left in ruins. Five more dead in North Hobart Boulevard blaze. Police chasing potential firebug. How did you get my number, Ira? At first I didn't understand you, but now I do. I'd like you to come back to the clinic. I'm helping other people now, doctor. I think you are confused. You haven't been to the clinic for weeks. I'm not confused anymore, Doctor. I'm helping people be together. This world is only temporary. We'll all be happier in heaven. Why don't you tell me where you are and I can come to you? I think the fires should end now. They have served their purpose. Oh, the fires are only beginning, Doctor. After the fires, everything will be beautiful and clean. Everything will be erased. The world will I can see my purpose now, Doctor. And you helped me to find it. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. I swear, this town is going straight to hell. So Fontaine is behind the fires? Why? He invested in the homes for GIs. Oh. That's right, he's burning out the people who wouldn't leave so he could build the homes for GIs. Ah, uh, it's all coming together now. But who's the guy? Ira. Who's the guy that he got to burn down the houses? Looks like he lost control of him, and he's now a loose cannon. He's gonna start burning down everything. Fontaine is behind the, the fires. Gosh, he's got his little fingers and everything, doesn't he? Oh, look at that. Something white on the ground. Nuts. Oh, hello. Someone was keeping watch. Looks like they were here for quite a while. Brand looks distinctive. Whoever he was, he was wearing boondockers. I would know that imprint anywhere. Boondockers. Well, we've got a guy who owns this property. Let's see if he's wearing boondockers. LAPD, can you tell me anything about the fire next door? Terrible luck. 
imagine after having won that weekend away. What's your name, sir? Foreman. Dudley Foreman. <clears throat> Bad luck being named Dudley Foreman. All right. Let's see exactly, exactly uh, how much of the fire he witnessed. Did you see or hear anything that might have... Look, we were asleep when we heard the explosion. Whoa. Interrupting an officer just doing his job, not letting him finish asking the question, and saying that you were asleep when you heard the explosion. But look at this facial expression. What does this tell us? Joe Kerr says, I wish Cole wore some gloves while dealing with the evidence. Yeah, but it was 1947. They didn't really do that back then, I don't think. He's got this half-smug look on his face. His eyebrow flits up every now and then for just a moment, and he purses the corners of his mouth. Let's wait for his little snide comment, and then, you know, I think we'll doubt his story. Hey, I don't have all day. <laughs> I think I've seen this actor before somewhere. Bad cop. You didn't like Morelli, did you? Some neighbors you get along with, some you don't. Guess they should have sold up. What do you mean? They're knocking down all these old houses and building a new subdivision for GIs. Morelli was being difficult. Another theme. The victims are all people who are being difficult with the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Let's see if he knew, if he saw any suspicious activity. Did you see anyone hanging around the Morelli's home prior to the explosion? Nope. Can't say as I was looking out, though. Okay, this suspicious behavior is different, but still suspicious. He no longer looks smug. Now he looks kind of uncomfortable slightly worried like he doesn't really want to be here anymore he's holding on to something that he hopes we don't ask about he's barely making eye contact too he'll meet eyes with Cole for a moment and then look away briefly before returning his gaze hey I don't have all day Bad cop. You sure, Mr. Foreman? There are signs of someone hanging around over there by the fence. Hey, now that you come to think of it, there was a guy. Kind of tall. Skinny, though. Anything else? Orange lumber jacket, a beat-up hat, and no hair. I thought he was the pest exterminator guy who was working around here the last few days. But that guy had hair. Well, then why would you think that it was the pest exterminator if he didn't have hair? That's quite a description. Orange jacket, no hair, tall guy. Well, I think we've got a description of our guy. All right, uh, planned demolitions. You said someone is knocking these houses down? Elysian Fields. You must know them. They're billboards. That Monroe character beaming down at you. We've had an offer for the house. Did the Morellis want to sell? I don't know. He just told us that they didn't want to sell, that they were being difficult. This is one of the frustrating things about the game. If you, if you get one of the questions right, they'll reveal too much information, which kind of defeats the purpose of an upcoming question. Uh, Brissy says nobody was germaphobes back then, so tampering with evidence without protective devices was the norm. That and I don't think that they had um, a very good forensic technology back then like I don't, I don't I don't think they even barely looked under microscopes let alone look for DNA evidence and <clears throat> traces of bodily fluids that react under UV light and checking fingerprints and all of that well we know that this guy's lying but uh, we didn't get an updated clue for our book about what he said so our really our only option is to hey, doubt I don't have all day Mogster just subscribed for two months. Thanks, Mogster. Let's do bad cop. Whatever you thought of Morelli, his whole family is dead. 
They couldn't have all deserved that. I want you to help me here, Foreman. Morelli was pig-headed. He built the house himself. He didn't want to sell. Stubborn fool was ruining it for all of us. Finally, the promotional travel contest. You said the Morellis had won a weekend away. To Catalina Island? Yeah, that's right. First thing I thought after the explosion was, thank goodness they was away. But then I find out they were still in there. Who was running the competition? What? I don't know. Well, why were they still in there? Two families? They didn't get sick too, did they? Now, dis despite his rather dismissive and curt answer to Cole's question here, uh, the, the correct answer is still truth. And I think based primarily on his body language, his face is a stone. It's completely unmoving. He rocks around a bit, but he looks calm and confident. Meeting eyes with Cole, he's got nothing to hide. Omega Zero says, I really love this game's style. Facial expressions, voiceover. Yeah, they really put it together well. It's a bit dated, you can tell. Uh, you know, the, the texture quality is hey, not very high. I don't have all day. But it's a really unique kind of game. Like, there, there isn't another game like this at all that I know of. You didn't enter yourself? I'd already agreed to sell. The competition was an incentive for those who were still thinking about it. Thanks for your time, Mr. Foreman. Sure. Hey, if you're interested, I have one of those competition flyers in the kitchen. I could get it for you if you like. That'd that be nice. Be great. Thank you. Any luck, Cole? A couple of things. What did you pick up? Hold a piece of paper. Looks complicated. Japanese call it origami. Can I take a look? Sure. Mm, well, well, well. Paper cray. There's a legend about them. You fold 1,000 of these and you get a wish. Oh. Let's see what's inside. Hey, don't break it. I'm not. I'm unfolding it. It looks like a waybill or a flyer. For what? <laughs> Is this the same one that we got from the guy For inside? Elysian Fields Developments. Napoleon War says, I thought Ox would do this in black and white. I was going to do it. Well, I toyed with the idea, as I uh, talked about when I live streamed Manifest Destiny. But, um, you know, when I sat down to actually edit it and put it together, the black and white just didn't look as good. And I knew I would get comments of people complaining about it. And I was kind of missing the color, too. So I decided not to do that. It would have been cool and moody and all that, but the color is really nice. Anyway. Oh, I see you already have one. When did the flyer arrive in your mailbox? They've been arriving for weeks. This one was in the mailbox when I got home from work yesterday afternoon. We want to buy your old home today. Call 2800 Elysian Fields, win a trip to Catalina Island, Ring, Michigan, 945. Well, this explains all of the trips to Catalina Island we saw at the Gulliver's Travels Travel Agency in our last episode. Woodman, subscribe to Tier 1. Thank you, good sir. Now, <clears throat> I suppose we need to call into R&I because I see something on the uh, map over there, but let's check out my handy cheat sheet. Yep, next we use the gam well. Well, then what am I remembering about the basement? I remember... I remember we could go into the basement and even hurt ourselves or something. Let's just check it out. All right, so before we dial the number, it's set inside. I heard this is a triple.
Head downstairs. Why would they build this elaborate set if they didn't want us to do anything with it? There's all this junk everywhere. Most of it we can't interact with. And I remember something on the table. I could have sworn there was like a, a button we could press to accidentally and blow ourselves up. <clears throat> Woodman says, cheat, Ox. <clears throat> well, I've already played through the game once, so I I did my duty. I, I un uncovered the story without having it spoiled for me. But now I'm doing a lore video, and I want to make sure I get everything. So I am reading up a guide to uh, make sure I have everything before I shoot footage. Last thing I want to do is produce a, a video on this, and then have someone in the comments say, Ox, you missed something. Oh, Ox, what about that part? Or Ox, did you forget about blah, blah? That is quite a furnace. Holy cow, that is a furnace. Look at this thing. Snaking throughout the house. I can see why he wouldn't want to sell. He put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this place. All right, well, I guess uh, my memory is mistaken. Whoa, the FPS. Well, we've got smoke particle effects and we've got reflections on the water and then Biggs was down there with me so a couple of people's textures all right well let's go to the gamwell then and make a call into R and I jump over the garden why not I swear this town is going straight to hell I need an address for a property developer, Elysian Fields Developments. One moment, detective. The address is 748 North Oxford Avenue, Wilshire. Anything else? Messages, please. You have a message. Contact Captain McKelty immediately. Thanks. Can you put me through, operator? Of course. Here you are. Commander? Leads on the Morelli farm. We're about to go and visit Elysian Fields Developments. You're about to do what? Leland Monroe? He's a personal friend of the mayor and the chief. Are you out of your mind? I'm warning you, Phelps. Commander, we have a line of inquiry. You have something, you bring it to me. You're hanging by a thread, Phelps. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Oh, Good. dear. <laughs> I have a report on my desk today. <clears throat> Kelty has warned us off over a lesion. Makes sense. It's a dead end. We should check out Rancho Escondido. You know the place? Sure. Corner of Fountain and Wilton. Let's go. Rancho Detective, Escondido. Say but we can't go to Elysian Fields, eh? But I think I wanna. Well, let's do Rancho e uh, Econ Escondido or whatever. Can first. you drive to this one? Fine. Where are we headed? So this is the one that was destroyed by a fire as well, but it was incomplete, so no one died. So what is this, insurance fraud? Shame about Jeff. The arson desk has been trying to nail that son of a bitch for years. He's still in custody, Herschel. Wanna bet? Fella kicked him loose already. Can't hold him for misdemeanor cigarettes and matches. Wow, what's with the load screens? This is the longest it's taken to load in any of the cases I've done. I usually see one or two. But man, we're going through the entire collection. Eradicate DK says, oh man, he's about to find out about the Illuminati. Illuminati! You know, there are times when you really miss a nightstick. There's more religion in the end of a nightstick than in a hundred cathedrals. Hey, what have we here? 
Are these the veterans with their homes is, their homes burned down? I'm not going to tell you again, sir. Don't tell me when and how I can come and go on my own property. It is not This safe, is America, sir. dickhead. Now step back or I'll lock you up for Smart a break. son of a bitch. Whoa, you hey sorry, now. Sack. That's not it, Cole. We're going to have to pacify these poor saps. Come on, then. Anyone else? Yeah. Oh, knocked off my hat. Ooh, he dodged that one. Oh! Yeah. Is that it? Just those two? Good thing you showed up when you did, detectives. Those folks were baying for blood. Okay, then. Let's see if there's anything left to take a look at. Let me guess, water heater? Mailbox. No letter from vault Tech there. No water heater. Maybe they just sabotaged one and then the wind blew the fire around. But that music. Oh. Oh, that's right. Mortar is like dust. Is that normal in a fire? You'd expect some shrinkage in the heat, but it looks like the cement barely adhered to the brick. Doesn't appear to be any wall ties either. This thing looks like it was built on the cheap. <clears throat> built on the cheap. Whoa. If we're paying a visit to Alicia and ruining my career, Let's bite the bullet and get on with it. <laughs> Poor Herschel. He's going to lose his pension. Pick up your hat, man. Nope, he's going to leave it there? Okay. So, someone built a bunch of GI homes using crappy materials, and then they all burned down. You can drive. Well, it's a good and thing where exactly the developers didn't lose a lot of money on it. Well, maybe it's one of the settings I changed to improve performance that is causing all of these extra load screens. I did reduce my CPU cores, maybe that's it. Very modernist. I bet he didn't have shoddy bricks built on this. Things made out of marble. Detectives Phelps and Biggs, LAPD, to see Leland Monroe. Do you have an appointment? We're the police, lady. We don't need an appointment. Can I tell him what it's about? It's an official investigation. There are two police officers here to see Mr. Monroe. Send them through. Hey, Oxhorn, what got you into Fallout? Thanks, ma'am. Well, uh, Fallout 3 got me into Fallout... It was my first Fallout game, and I just fell in love with the universe. May I help you, gentlemen? I would like to speak to Mr. Monroe. I'm afraid it's impossible. Mr. Monroe's schedule is booked weeks in advance. Cut to the chase, sister. Is he in? I'm not at liberty to reveal that, officer. 
So he hired you for your intelligence? Oh. I find that offensive. You have every right to. Oh. This is getting us nowhere, miss. Casino. Would you like us to return with a warrant? That won't be necessary, gentlemen. Come into my office. Mr. Leland Monroe himself. Time to talk to the big dog. You like a cigar? Drink, boys. Sure, well, since you're offering. Sketch. Biggs. We're investigating a series of domestic fires, Mr. Monroe. It's terrible, boys. How can I help? Okay. <clears throat> Lila Monroe, 52. He looks older than that, but okay. Elysian linked to arsons. Elysian Fields and Suburban Redevelopment Fund flyers keep turning up in the vicinity of the fires. They're turning up all over town, boys. Can you imagine the current demand for housing? So that's your explanation, Mr. Monroe? Coincidence? Explanation? Why, what's to explain? I advertise on radio and billboards for buyers, and I advertise for sellers using waybills. Wow, this is a unique type of human. He has no eyes, just little squinty slits and sockets, big black sockets. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> How are we going to tell whether or not he's lying? We can't even see his eyes. All right. Well, um, I guess he's uncomfortable. No, wait, he's smiling. No, is that a smile? No, he's passing gas. Is that what that is? How can we... <laughs> Tell what this is. Oh, I recognize this guy. No, Moira, you're right. He says, wait, is that Denethor? Yeah, this is the guy who played Denethor in uh, Return of the King. He looks smug. Everyone is saying he looks smug. All right, well, we'll use some bad cop or doubt to get through him. That's where I knew him from. It's been bugging me. Thank you, Moira. I've recognized Can him, but I didn't know from where. Little? Okay, there's his snarky comment. We'll doubt his story. We found a family burnt out in their home. Another house burned to the ground. Another Elysian Fields flyer. Our information is that they didn't want to sell. Are you saying that's something to do with me? Is that your point? Oh, it is. Every time we find a family barbecue, we find one of your flyers. Is that good advertising? Oh, poor Herschel. His pension is gone. <laughs> He's done. All right, what's the next one? Promotional travel contest. Let's learn more about that. What do you know about a competition for families to win free vacations to Catalina Island? My company runs many promotions. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. He's not familiar with it, and yet in every arson case we've gotten so far, we have found... A family who has won this contest. And we saw an entire booklet filled with names of people going to the Catalina Islands. And now he's uncomfortable. <laughs> he can see something moving around deep inside those big black sockets. <laughs> it's hard to tell what he's got going on in there. He looks confused. He's certainly confused. But you know what? We've got evidence that he's lying here. So we'll wait for him to say his snarky comment and then give it to him. Omega Zero says that's the oh crap face. Tape Splicer says this whole time this guy makes me think Can of we Roger speed Rabbit. This up a little? But he's actually Denethor. Yeah, the, the villain in Roger Rabbit, I think, was Christopher Lloyd from Back to the Future fame. Level with me, Mr. Monroe. You know all about the vacation offers. You can believe whatever you like, son. You're missing the vital ingredient called proof. Ah, but the proof we have is his very face stamped on the Elysian Field Flyers, at the very bottom of which is a ticket that says, Win a trip to the Catalina Islands. Your face is all over the flyers, Mr. Monroe. You know about the prizes, and you're aware that they get given to holdouts. My face is the brand. It's on all our advertising. Did you know that the mayor and the chief of police are part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? 
Do you want to accuse them of murder as well? Oh, 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 we've really stepped in it now. Oh dear, what's going to happen next? Okay. Um, local land acquisitions. We've made offers to buy houses in areas where fires have been recorded. <laughs> Are you suggesting that I'm burning people out of their homes so that I can sell them new ones? What happens to your plans if a family like the Morellis refuses to sell? We work around them. Business finds a way. That's the American way. Yes, that is the American way. You build around them like an up. But if you're a criminal and you don't want to do things the American way, well, you might end up with a police officer in your office asking these tough questions, won't you? Now, I did play through this game once before, but I got many of the questions wrong. So uh, what I'm really looking forward to is getting through each of these cases by answering the questions correctly. That's going to uh, tie the cutscenes together so that I actually <laughs> know how this game plays out. I'm sure Lex says he's lying, even if he's not. I just hate how he looks. <laughs> That's the beauty of an actor like this. He's got such a distinctive face. He makes such a great villain. I love the way he looks. I mean, not because he's beautiful or anything, but he's such, he's so charismatic. And even if his charisma is lack of charisma, if that makes sense. Can we speed this up a little? <clears throat> All right. Big Al says, Cole's like, well, I'm already in deep. Might as well. Yeah, he's just going all in. Bad cop. Come on, Mr. Monroe. You expect me to believe that you would build a new development with one of those old piles smack bang in the center of it? Progress is an inexorable process, detective. Those who choose to stand in defiance are usually confined to the waste basket of history. To answer your question, yes, we would build around them if we had to. Most people see sense. Hmm. All right. Well, what about an entire development burning down, like the Rancho Escondido fire? What's Elysian Fields' involvement in Rancho Escondido? One of our latest housing developments. It was due to open on the weekend, or was before the unfortunate conflagration. It met with building code regulation. Absolutely. Only the best for our returning heroes. Whoops. Well, we know he's lying here. We'll point to the poor and shoddy brickwork done on the houses. Even in a fire like that, it shouldn't completely burn away the mortar, causing an entire wall to collapse. Lethal Scientist says he's the perfect 40s businessman, to be honest. And that voice. <laughs> I know, I like that voice. I hope I have a voice like him someday. Man, you could command attention with a voice like that. <laughs> Waiting for the side comment, then we're going to do a lie. Can we speed this up a little? You're lying, bro. There's something out of kilter about that development. Son, I've had enough of you and your fidgety friend. There's no way in hell you can <laughs> prove that my materials were inferior. I love the way he said fidgety friend. Son, you're out of line, you and your fidgety friend. It's almost like a poem. I'm no expert, but I think we'll find that the bricks being used on those houses are undersized and the mortar is faulty. And there's no wall ties connecting the masonry to the frame. Every building is built to a budget, boys. Those buildings were inspected and fully insured by California Fire and Life. Investment of that magnitude demands it. Do you think that they'd vouch for the buildings without examining them? The arsonists, do you have any suspects? We aren't at liberty to say. I didn't think so. The contractors I use for waybills. You suppose it could be any of them? I have a list of their names, if it'd be of any help. That would be very helpful, Mr. Monroe. He's being very Glad to hear helpful. it. I'm always happy to help the LAPD. Oh, sure. My secretary will provide you with that list. 
Did you know that I'm on the board of the police pension fund? Oh, Herschel, I'm so sorry. Glad to be of help, officers. No, no, I'm sorry, Herschel. He's so done. Gotta get this animation. Well, Herschel. If we all get fired from this, you and me, we can get a bungalow by the beach and just fish for the rest of our lives and drink beer. How's that sound? Don't need to be a millionaire to do that. Getting all these gorgeous animations. Take a look behind his desk. I'm sure he won't mind. Friends? Family? Conquests? Exploits? Man, what am I going to do in the video? I guess I'm going to have to set that to jazzy music. Nope, we did that already. It'll be like a cinematic of all of these beautiful homes. Can I uh, take a look at that? No? How about that? No? Nope. 10K for housing. Wow, says Ikeem. Yeah, I know. Better days. Better days. Well, in some ways. Not better days for others. All right, let's get that list from the secretary and her floating desk. Look at that. It defies gravity. What's the story? Any of these names ring a bell? Okay, Joseph Bradley, Paul Jones, Herbert Chapman. Chapman, where did we hear about Chapman? Michael Muldoon, Thomas Taffel, Leon Petrov, David Ashworth, Ch Chapman. Herbert Chapman is on this list. Find the phone. We need to know where we're at with Chapman. Oh, Chapman was the guy that we rounded up in our last episode. That's right. The, the guy with the uh, cigarette and the matchbook. All right, where's the phone? I didn't come to California. To You're a real ass. Your boss is a fine that. man. Wrinkled was not one of the things I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> Operator, give me dispatch. I love it. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, detective? Can you check whether we are still holding a Herbert Chapman? Let me find out for you. He was released this morning, Detective. Ah. I'm sorry, Detective. Not your fault. Can you give me a last known address and put out an APB on the guy? I'll get back to you, Detective. APB will go out over KGPL shortly. Thanks, ma'am. Cutscene. I'm Sherlock says, is there a real Fallout movie to, to watch? No, they were going to make one back in the early aughts. They had a script and everything, but it was horrible. I'm glad it never came to fruition. Oh, Elza. Make the pain go away. Give me your heart and baby I'll bill it cause I always kill the thing I love. Yeah. Buy me a drink, Cole. Is it for no. Not even for old time's sake. Not even for that. You're not going to ask me why I'm here? I wouldn't give you the pleasure. Now get around. She's in fine voice this evening. I wonder how the commander would feel Save about... threats for someone who cares about them. You're breaking my heart, Cole. You know how I feel about you. Stay away from Elysian Fields. I should have known that you were playing errand boy. You and your doofus partner. You have been warned. Thanks for your cooperation, officer. I love you. Stay away. 
You have no idea the type of people that are involved in that company. I have a pretty good idea, Roy. The same kind of people that sent you here. Your investigation is finished. Homicide will be taking over from here. I've heard we've had a spate of grass fires in the hills that you and that hunchback might be able to handle. Thanks for the drink, Cole. Ooh, I love what they're doing with the music there. Did you hear that? Oh, that was so great. You get the message about Monroe? Yeah. Earl delivered it. You? McKelty. He started making noises about my pension. Ooh. Sorry about that, Earl. I didn't mean to drag you into this. Save it, Phelps. Monroe's an asswipe. And so was Earl. And so was McKelty when it's all said and done. Yeah, I like Herschel. He's a good guy. Y'all calling car 11K, 11K. 11K, go ahead. 11K, the last known address of suspect Herbert Chapman is 650 North Kingsley Drive in Wilshire. Roger that, KGPL. 11K en route. Let's go pick him up. Oh, they're making me drive. I want to drive. You fought at Sugarloaf, didn't you? I did. But I don't like to talk about it. You come across a guy called Jack Kelso out that way? You know Jack Kelso? He's an insurance investigator over at California Fire and Life. Our paths cross from time to time. For some reason, seeing you makes me think of him. Has uh, Jack spoken to you about his experiences on Sugarloaf? Or the rest of the campaign? Jack keeps stum just like you do. I know what it feels like to get back from conflict. You gotta respect that. Move it, you dog on slow walking people. All right, enough of this. Herschel, you do the walking or the driving. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. All right, where to? Voltron in the chat says, hey, Ox, big fan. Hey, Voltron, good to have you here. Laura says, hi, Ox. Uh, I'm late because the phone was charging, so I missed the notification. What's the case about? Well, we are on case two of the arson desk, and uh, where we found another house burned down that just so happened to win, uh, to win a trip to the Catalina Islands. We're looking for Herbert Chapman. I'm looking for him, too. I need him to move his car so I can mow the lawn. He's definitely not here. I've been banging on his door off and on for a couple of hours. Yeah, he's out somewhere. There's some kind Let's of take problem. a look at the car. Let's Ooh. see what he's hauling around. More Moz kill. Motive, opportunity, and hard evidence. Tape Splicer says, good luck with this segment, Ox. It's been so long since I've played through it that I don't know what's coming up next. So, oh dear, you've got me nervous now. I really hope I don't have to drive. Hello. I should advise the APB. He's clearly armed. So is Chapman our guy? He's got a big stack of those uh, flyers back there. Mad Leo says, oh man, this was such an underrated game. I love this game so much. Definitely gives him opportunity. I agree. He's only a writer, so All right, uh, let me check my sh cheat sheet. I was so I know what's coming up next. What? I don't remember that. The nigh heel sent me Hold it, Cole. 
There he is. It's Chapman. He's coming out of the laundromat. Shit. He's seen us. Cops. Again. And he pulls out his piece? Son of a bitch. He must have caught the trolley. We gotta move fast, Cole. Oh, they're making me drive. I'll call this in. Get some oh. cars dispatched. Oh, come Car on. Car 11K calling KGPL. Eleven K requesting assistance in pursuit of suspect aboard the Eleven Ten University streetcar, currently heading east on Melrose Avenue. Advise <laughs> all units. Suspect is in control of car and driving dangerously. Cole, don't lose him. Try and get in front of him. Can you lean out and shoot him? Herschel, do something. Ah, there you go. See if he can damage one of the wheels. Might act like a brake and slow the thing down. There we go. Yeah! End of the line, you little prick. Come on, Cole. Oh. Looks like we have our man, Cole. Well done. I'm not so sure. Chapman seemed to have his own agenda. There seems to be more to this than a personal vendetta. What are you talking about? Fires benefit a lesion in some way. I don't see Chapman and Monroe working together. You have a point. The evidence is good for Chapman. Hard to be worrying about his side of the story when he's blasting away with that big 45. Nice work, gentlemen. Put yourself at considerable risk stopping that trolley and probably saved a lot of lives. Anyone else but you, Phelps, and you'd be up for a bravery award. <laughs> We've had our eyes on that slippery son of a bitch Chapman for as long as I can remember. I couldn't be happier than to wipe him off the scoreboard. I hope this puts to bed that crazy stuff you had going about Leland Monroe. What were you thinking, Phelps? We'll be calling Richard Nixon a crook next. <laughs> uh, there's the hindsight joke. <laughs> home sweet home. She's all smiles. What is it? A letter from Lou. His insurance policy named me beneficiary. California fire and life. He worked for Elysian? The roof that he was working on collapsed. It's a very generous settlement. Elsa, I'd like you to do something for me. I think there's something dirty about Elysian Fields. What has that got to do with Lou? I want you to reject this settlement. I want you to go and see an investigator named Jack Kelso and ask him to make some inquiries about Lou's case. Isn't this police work? Do you want to find out what happened to Lou? Why would he help this Kelso? Jack won't be able to help himself if he smells a rat. He is a friend of yours? He hates my guts. Elsa, you could take this money and let them get away with it, or we could get Jack's help and do something about it. Why not be honest with this man, Cole? He deserves your honesty if you want his help. Believe me, Elsa, I'd like to level with him. I really would, but it's too late. Years too late. How'd we do? Ooh, <laughs> lots of city damage. Ooh, and that music was late. Okay. I'm in a quandary here. Here's the thing. It's 10 o'clock at night. I got the footage I need for this one case. And it's short. It's real short. My video tomorrow is going to be easy. And that's fine. I like easy videos. Especially when I have to do a live stream tomorrow. But I'm tempted to shoot more footage for the next episode. 
And I know you'd like that. <clears throat> I'd like it too, because I'm curious. I want to see how this plays out. This is the thing. The arson desk had me just completely confused. I got the major strings tied around, but I didn't see how they all wove together. And that's because I didn't get all of the questions right. I'm hoping that by playing through it with my cheat sheet now, I can finally get the answers right and figure out the story. So I'm kind of reliving this game for the first time uh, by, by putting together this series. The only question is I don't know how much, t how, much how, how long the next case is going to be. Let me stop recording for this episode and then uh, let me check my cheat sheet. All right. The next case is... House of Sticks. And if I recall, this is the one where Elsa interviews Jack Kelso. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. Do I really want to do it? Do I really want to do it? It's going to be another hour at least, maybe an hour and a half. If I do it now, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be able to do, well, I'll cut down on, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I should be sh shooting Fallout 3 footage for my Fallout 3 series, but I want to play this case. Let's do the case. Hey, finally, four stars. Look at that, five stars or whatever. Okay, House of Sticks. We've got three, no, four cases left. Wow, I did so bad on the last one that I didn't get any stars. <laughs> I didn't get any stars for that one. Oh, man. Okay, let's do House of Sticks. We got one, two, three, four left. And then we're done with the game, guys. Holy cow. Uh, I'm probably going to need to keep that, that save. I finished the gas man, so let's overwrite the gas man for now. Tape Splicer says the last case doesn't get a rating. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, I don't feel quite as bad. <laughs> Wait. I thought I just did really bad. I'm like, wow, zero stars on the last case. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Care says no stars must have been the driving. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised. Eric the Red says this case has a chase scene that drove me up the wall. Yay, and no glitch out on the intro fade. Thank God for that. This is so I I was so surprised. Well, I I'll just I won't say anything. Just wait. Mr. Kelso? That's what the sign on the door says, miss. The way she walks, this character, the actress really just embraced the role. Okay, what do we got here? <clears throat> I, I better read the whole thing. Oh, that's right. This is the note that she got while uh, Cole, while she came home with Cole. Elza Lichtman, 605 or 6005 West Sunset. Boulevard, Hollywood, Los Angeles, September 23rd, 1947. Dear Miss Lickman, pertaining to the matter of policy number 11901659 and the sudden death of Mr. Louis, Louis Juan Bulkwater. Bulkwater? Bulkwater? Oh, man, I'm going to have to look that up when I do the lore video. I'm writing to inform you that you have been named as sole beneficiary of Mr. Bulkwater's estate. Please find attached a settlement check for 20,000 big ones. Holy cannoli. The maximum payable amount in accordance with Clause 4A of the Life Care Disability and Accidental Death Policy, which Mr. Bulchwater held. If you wish to dispute the settlement, you may contact our account management office by return mail or by phone during office hours. With condolences, Clarence W. Fleming claims assessor, California Fire and Life Insurance. Miss Elza Lichtman. Wow. Well, there's no need to come into the office, Miss Lichtman. If you accept the settlement, all you need to do is sign here. And this is the thing that I thought was so innovative and interesting about this case. We've been playing as Cole Phelps this entire time. 
Now we're seeing things from the perspective of a completely different person. And I love it. I don't accept this. What do you mean you don't accept? I think you're pushing your luck, lady. This seems to be a ridiculously generous settlement. A $200 policy with a $20,000 payout? You should... I don't want the money. What do you mean you don't want the money? I want you to investigate this case. I feel my friend may have been the victim of foul play. Okay. Let me get the case file. Which is why the payout is so large. Lethal Scientist says 20K in 1947 is worth $223,705 in today's currency. Oh, 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 my goodness. Wow, that's a big payout. And she's turning this down for love just because Cole told her to. Well, she's also curious. Okay, so we've got a map here. What exactly are we looking at? This is a floor plan of the house There's that got he was... to be more in these files. A floor plan of the house he was in. Blueprint of the house. Uh, insurance policy number. Oh, here we go. Normandy Avenue subdivision. Against loss or damage not exceeding 900. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> While in the employ of Elysian Fields Development, Louis Van Bulkwater was killed when the roof of the property on which he was working collapsed. On Tuesday, the 28th of January, at approximately 8.30 in the morning, Mr. Bulkwater was ascending the roof structure of a property at the Normandy Avenue Development when a fault in the ridge beam caused it to sag. Witnesses report that Mr. Bulkwater slipped and attempted to right himself by holding onto a ceiling rafter, but the rafter then broke. Mr. Bulkwater fell approximately 23 feet to the ground. His falling weight caused several ceiling joints to snap and these fell inward along with part of a prefabricated roof truss holy cow how much of this house was gonna break under this guy's own weight an autopsy later revealed that mr bolchwater's cranium was shattered probably when he struck his head on one of the roof beams he sustained significant internal injuries as a result of the falling timber and died of internal hemorrhage approximately 10 minutes after the initial roof collapse independent testing of the ridge beam and roof truss has determined that faults in the timber were undetectable prior to installation witnesses report that mr bolchwater was following all safety procedures it is the opinion of this investigator that the death of lewis van bolchwater's constitutes a genuine and unavoidable industrial accident and no fault can be ascribed to Elysian Fields developments. The insurance benefits as associated with this policy should be paid in full to the designated beneficiaries. Timothy Lee. Sounds like your friend took a hell of a fall. I'm sorry for your loss. Dang, 10 minutes. Yeah, that's a lot of bleeding. A couple of, questions? of course not. Here's where I completely bungled the thing when I tried to do this on my own. Well, it's been over a year ago now. Gosh, <clears throat> I think I got every single one of these questions wrong. So let's find out exactly what I missed the first time. Disputed claim payout. What basis do you have for your claim of foul play? Lou Buckwalter was a craftsman. I don't believe he would have made a roof that would collapse. I was blinded by the fact <clears throat> that Elsa is a good character. And so I think I chose truth for all of the in interrogation questions. After all, she's here tr to get him to help her. Why would she be holding anything back? But this logic was inaccurate, apparently. Uh, because the correct answer for this is bad cop. We've got three questions with her. Two are bad cop and one, only one, is truth. So why would she be lying? Or at least holding back information? That's the frustrating part about this. And it's what got me the first time I played. You look as if you might have something on your mind, Mr. Carso. Big Al says, I'm no expert, but a, a human weight probably shouldn't cause that much damage. Yeah, I agree. All right, we're going to doubt her story. You want me to reopen this case based on your woman's intuition? That isn't going to happen. Take the money. I've already told you I do not want the money. 
There's something wrong with their doubts. Okay, and we don't get any answers there. Oh, great. Next, connection to Buckwater. You and Buckwalter weren't married? No. Then how did you become his beneficiary? We were family friends. Lethal Scientist sheds some great insight here. She withholds the information to protect her source, Cole. Yeah, <clears throat> that makes sense. She would be cagey because she's trying to protect her source. Kelso wouldn't work on this if he thought Cole was coming to him for help. That's why Cole sent Elsa. But neither of these two questions have anything to do with Cole. They have to do with the industrial accident. Like, for example, here she says that he's a family friend. We find out later exactly how close they were, but why not divulge that information to Kelso? <clears throat> that has nothing to do with Cole. You look as if you might have something on your mind, Mr. Kelso. <laughs> I love the way she talks. You look like you have something on your mind, Mr. Kelso. Bad cop. You expect me to reopen this case because you come in here walking that walk? Well, oh. I'm not buying it. I think you should tell me what the hell is going on. You really want to know? Yes. We were interned together on Ellis Island. Resident alien Germans whose parents had been killed by Nazis. Do you see the irony in that, Mr. Kelso? We spent four years there. Wow. Wow, interred at Ellis Island. German Jewish refugees of the Nazis and she gets imprisoned by the Americans. Okay, yeah, I can see the irony in that. Oh man. And why she doesn't want to talk about it. All right, motive for dispute. So the roof collapsed, accidents happened. What exactly are you trying to achieve here, Ms. Lichtman? Exactly what I said. I want that building thoroughly investigated. And this is the only truth. And we can deduce this based on her body posture. She sits back comfortably. She's confident. She's not hiding any of herself from Kelso. She's not ashamed. She makes direct eye contact. She's open. She's honest. She's telling the truth. But we got to wait for her side comment before I can do it so that I give myself enough room for the narration overtalk for the lore video when it comes out. But man, I'm shooting footage for a video that's two weeks away. You look as if you might have something on your mind, Mr. Kelso. There it is. I'm intrigued, Miss Lichtman. I really am. But you're going to have to give me something if you want me to get involved in this. There is a conspiracy surrounding Elysian Fields and the new houses they are building. I believe your insurance company is involved. That's pretty heady stuff, Miss Lichtman. Flimsy, but heady. I've told you what I know, Mr. Kelso. What are you going to do about it? All right, Miss Lichtman. One final question. Yes. What's your address? Ooh. Is that usual? Ooh. Is there anything usual about this case, Ms. Lichtman? The address is on the letter, Mr. Kelso. <laughs> the address. Not the phone number. Oh, Kelso, you smoothie. Oh. <laughs> Look at it. She knows, too. She's just looking at him. She writes it down. I think she's somewhat pleased. Oh, of course, the walk away. Mr. Benson would like to see you in his <laughs> office, Jack. Upstairs. Okay. Come on, I'll walk you up. You're going to walk me up. Oh. But before we do that, we need... I heard a little tingly noise. A skeleton goes into a bar. There it was again. You hear that?
come on. I'm... What? What do you want me to do? I hear the tingly noise. You coming? I'm coming, I'm coming, but I got... There we go. I'll be in touch. <coughs> Pardon me. Lethal Scientist says, Ox, what are your thoughts on the new roadmap for 76, particularly where they mention new stories, factions, quests with choice and impact? I'm pretty excited, I'm stoked, and I'll be sure to cover it in due time. Is this all the same stuff we saw earlier? Yeah. So all that was new was the phone number. All right, let's follow this secretary. Whoop. Knocked over my trash can. Lead on. He'll never find out. Everyone's saying bless you. Thank you very much. You're all so kind. Mr. Benson, you wanted to see me? Ah, yes, Jack. I'm just trying out a new putter. I noticed Elsa Lickman in the lobby. It's the weirdest thing, Mr. Benson. Call me Curtis, Jack. This is California. Like I said, Curtis, this is a very strange case. How so, Jack? That lady, Elsa Lichtman, is refusing a 20 grand payout. Elsa Lichtman is hardly a lady, Jack. She's a jazz musician. Plays at the Blue Room in Hollywood. She has a fine pair of lungs, now that I She's think of it. She's the beneficiary of this guy, Lou Buckwalter. He was killed in an industrial accident working for Elysian Fields Developments. You know Elysian? I'm familiar with Leland Monroe. We move in similar circles. Well, Ms. Lichtman is making some pretty serious accusations. She says the case stinks and that she's a very happened. highly strung girl, Jack. Strung out might be a better way to put it. It's a pretty generous payment, Curtis. I think I should look into is it. Is there anything wrong with the paperwork, Kelso? No, there isn't, Mr. Benson. I didn't think so. Pay the case out and get her off our backs. I can't make her take the money, Deal sir. Deal with it, Jack. Do your fucking job. Whoa. Do I have to do everything? No, sir, you don't. Fine, Jack. Fine. You know I have the greatest confidence in you. Thanks, Mr. Benson. <clears throat> well, no longer calling him Curtis. Goodness. <laughs> Big Al says lungs in quotes. Yeah. Your car, Mr. Well, Kelso. This town is going straight to hell. Thanks, kid. Oh, no, I don't have a driver. Oh no, I don't have a driver. Ah, oh, what am I gonna do? Hold on. Gotta get my cheat sheet. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna go to Elysian Fields. And I think I can still skip all the driving. There you go. Thank you, Tape Splicer. So, Cole and Herschel came here in the case before last. Let's see what we find. Ah, and we're in business.
customer named Elysian Fields. That's not how my pop <clears throat> taught me to mix it. Someone is cutting corners. Portland cement two tons, base building sand course, one fourth graded aggregate 16. Apparently, Kelso hears a bit of a concrete mason, and he knows that this is somehow wrong. Not supposed to use coarse sand, I guess? Is it just cheaper? Ah, two. Order of demolition, the city of Los Angeles pursuant to section 191 part one subsection A of the California Building and starting again. Of the California Building Code hereby orders that any building work at the Normandy Avenue subdivision associated with the incident of 12847 be immediately demolished and all building material removed from the site. September 22nd, 1947. Okay, so they were ordered to remove all of the burned houses from uh, Escondido. Bet that's going to cost them a pound or two. Leland Monroe, the man with the grin. Looks like he doesn't like to be disappointed. Big Al says it's the ratios. Ah. That would make more sense. Okay, so we saw a note from Leland in the same spot in our first arson case. All this one says is <laughs> delays will not be tolerated. Tough guy. Hey, you just can't be walking around down here. I'm Jack Kelso from California Fire and Life. I don't care if you're from the Vatican. Buzz off. I'm investigating the accidental death of a Lou Buckwalter and- You deaf? Do I have to beat on you? Looks like you do. Ooh. Oh, and uh, cheap shot. But you know what? Just like Cole Kelso, here is a Marine. I came to see the house where Lou Buckwalter died. You were just about to offer to show me the way. It's out the gate and three houses down on the left. Don't know what you're looking for, smart guy. There's nothing there. Then I'll poke around in the rubble. Fine. As long as you're out of my sight. Oh, get your hat. There you go. All right, so we're looking for rubble. Well, I only see one house rubble. That's going to be over here. Grown men playing at being Okay, there it is. The place falls down and then they bulldoze it. What gives here? I bet the flags are uh, helpful. Ooh, not for construction use. Is it not going to say anything? I'm going to shock the hell out of you. When is America going to understand? It's not about getting, it's about giving. Okay. I'm out of here. So, neither of these two. I wish I could afford that. Ah, here's another one. Oh. Being decisive. Yeah. Not that one either. Sure. That's disgusting. Didn't you ever hear of germs? Calling you stupid would be an insult to stupid. There we go. Let's try to piece this together. Oh, okay. That's not right. Uh, 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 uh. So not that one. Well, let's try Here's the bottom one. Ah, perfect fit. Only Keystone Sorry. Films. 
Who gets their lumber from a film studio? Well, we learned uh, many cases ago that Keystone Films was demolished. Oh, some vengeance! Son of a bitch! Oh, I remember this. I hate it so much. No, wrong way! Wrong way! Okay, I remember this took me a long time. Let's try again. Alright, but turning around to shoot at him slows me down too. Ha <laughs> ha, see? I can't, I can't remember which way I turned. Oh no, alright, here we are. Well, hope you guys are in for a long night. Sit down and buckle up. Ah! No. <laughs> no, I don't want to skip it. No, I will do this. <laughs> I will get through. Fallout Shorty says, just run till you get to the end, Ox. Yeah, but the last time I, I remember trying that when I played through the game the first time, and he kept catching up to me. Son of a bitch. Can I kill him or can I not? Was I supposed to kill him? The heck? Hold on. I need to find out whether or not I ruined my case by killing him. Firstly, it's not necessary to kill the, bu the bulldozer driver. Simply aiming will spin him around. Well, I don't know. Olive oil comes from olive. Where does baby oil come from? If olive oil all talking, comes from olives, where does baby oil come from? That's a disgusting thought. Oh, well, he deserved it for trying to run me over. Jack Kelso, California Fire and Life Investigator. I need an address on the Keystone Film Company. The address is... 658 North Wilton Place. Is there anything else? No, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I wonder if I can restart. Well, I don't want to deal with it. I'll do it later. All right, to the car.
problem with this part of the case is we've got no banter. Without a partner, we've got no friendly banter in the car. Maybe that'll make this a quick video. Hi, Mac. I work for California Fire and Life. I'm looking into an industrial accident. Here? No, not here. At a housing development over on Normandy Avenue. So? I found some lumber over there had the Keystone name printed on it. We've been closed since 41. Never quite made the transition to talkies. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund are pulling the place down. Know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Nix. Mind if I take a look around? I'm kind of hungry. If someone was to leave a couple of bucks here, I might wander down the street and get a cup of coffee. Is there a key to the gate? No. The only guys who go in or out are some delivery guys from Elysian Fields. They're working on a housing development over at Wilton and Santa Monica. You'll have to hop it. So, <clears throat> reclaimed lumber from a defunct film studio that's been out for six years. What will we find here? There's a manhole cover. Can we go to the sewers? Nope. Big Al says, to be fair, Cole has Herschel, and he has no friendly banter. That's true. Screening room. Ah. What's this? Let's see what the rich and powerful have to say for themselves. Pardon me. Okay, looks like I missed something. Hold on. So there was a t there was the lumber pile around the building to my right. And another, okay. So this is only part of it. We need to go back out. We'll do that in a minute. <clears throat> First, let's go out and examine these lumber piles. Ooh. Lumber pile. Here we go. Look at all of this lumber. Destined for veteran homes. But I'm... Oh, here we go. So this is where their lumber comes from? <clears throat> Eastern white pine. Pine is a, uh, it's a soft wood, right? Inferior quality. That's one way to keep your costs down. Too bad it won't support a roof. All right, I think we're getting the clues we need. Let's go take a look at that film canister. What will we find on it? See if we can find a way to play the movie. I missed those two clues in my first playthrough. Okay, we got three reels there.
There we go. In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen joined forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GIs. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. He's our latest investor in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Doctor, this is Curtis Benson. He's vice president of the California Fire and Life. We're pleased to meet you, Doctor. Ray Gordon, editor of the Times. Doctor. District Attorney Donald Sandler and Police Chief Warren. Gentlemen, I am delighted to be in such exalted company. You're making quite a name for yourself, Doctor, amongst the thespian fraternity. I find that those of artistic temperament are often of a fragile mental disposition. It's a short step from miscreant to recidivism, Doctor. Very true. But I think we could all agree that the City of Angels does rather well basking in the reflection of the motion picture industry. Hear, hear. And it's something that every sucker getting off a train at Union Station wants a part of. Gentlemen, we're here to sell the American dream, and Hollywood is our greatest advertiser. So... How is your new development selling, Leland? You cannot throw them up fast enough, Ray. And that's part of the problem, Leland. Washington is receiving steady complaints. There's a clamor for public God housing. God damn it, Ray. Public housing is tantamount to communism. Now, that's why we fought this goddamn war. I'm telling you, it's reds by the back door. You can't have it both ways, <laughs> Leland. The new freeways are being built to service all your developments out in the boondocks. They're all being built with government money. The GI Bill is government money. There's a difference. What difference? The GI money ends up in my pocket. I hope you mean uh, our pockets, Leland. We're all investors. Of course, Curtis. So, when will the freeway bond be passed on? It still has to be ratified. It takes a long time to raise three billion dollars. I need to find a game well or a telephone. Well... We just uncovered in a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and primary plot forces here. to launch the suburban so development fund. The suburban no, no, Fontaine Fontaine used the morphine he got from Courtney and he sold it and took that money to invest in the suburban redevelopment fund. That's how he's involved. Operator, can you put me through to police dispatch? Putting you through now. This is Jack Kelso, investigator for California Fire and Life. Can you put me through to Curtis Benson, please? Just a moment, please, Mr. Kelso. Jack, how can I help? Do you know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, Mr. Benson? I've heard of them, Jack. Building new homes for GIs. With green lumber that was used on movie sets. Jack, are you working the Buckwalter case? Mr. Benson, are you part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Jack, I want you to listen very clearly. Call Miss Lickman. Call her as soon as you hang up. Arrange to see her tonight and get her to agree to the settlement. Do it tonight. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. End of story, Jack. I don't want to hear another word about Elsa Lickman or Lou Buckwalter. <sighs> Can you put me through to Michigan 221? through. Hello? Ms. Lichtman, it's Jack Kelso. Yes, Mr. Kelso. I've been looking into your case. Yes, and what have you found? It doesn't look good. I need to see you. Meet me at the Blue Room. I work there tonight. I take a break around nine. I'll be waiting at the stage door. We can talk then. Auf Wiedersehen, Mr. Kelso. Thanks, ma'am. Cutscene. <clears throat> I don't suppose I'll make a plea. Cause, baby, you know I'm guilty. Who just walks in, waves, and walks out? Oh, that's the sign. Gotcha. Now forget what he does here. 
He just walks in, waves and leaves, or did he... Oh, that's right, he's going around back. <laughs> this is why I wanted to fix the stuttering, because these camera angles are great. I love the moving camera. It just gets messed up. What were you doing with him? I was doing what you asked. I didn't ask you to meet him in an alleyway. Why do you snarl at me? Your friend came to ask me to accept the insurance. He's plan. not my friend, Elsa. I think he's a brave man, and you have placed him in great danger. You've involved him in something, and he has no idea of the risks. Can you live with that, Cole? Elsa, I need his help, and he hates my guts. Forget the past, Cole. He deserves a chance to say no. If he helps you, let it be on his terms. I'll go see him in the morning. Let's just hope that by then, <clears throat> it won't be too late. Hey, 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 it's an alleyway, guys. Not a bedroom. My goodness gracious. Some people. All right, <clears throat> back to my cheat sheet. So, <clears throat> he's going to talk in the morning, but Jack, Jack, he doesn't sleep. Jack, he likes to work. There's no stopping for Jack. So Jack's going somewhere else tonight. Let's see where else is he going. I think he's going to Elysian Field Site 2. All right, Jack, where you want to go? Have your invisible butler drive you. doesn't make you any more Christian than standing in a garage makes you a car. That's right, Jack. Give Cole and Elza some privacy in their public alley. And get back to work. It's going to be harder getting in here than it was Keystone. Ooh. Lights in the attic. <clears throat> what are thugs doing thieving? A house that doesn't even have an occupant yet. Let's just walk inside, bold as you like, and say hi. How about that? Howdy, neighbor. I came for a cup of sugar. And he pulls out his piece. No, it's a flashlight. What was that? I heard a dingle. I heard a dingle, dingle. Tingle thing. There. Come on. I, there we go. Nice wiring job, fellas. Keep them in the dark. A light switch without even any wiring? I mean, that's... It's like these are movie sets. about going upstairs now. What else we got in here? Paint? Dirt? A sawhorse. Okay, sawdust. What's in the kitchen? Moldy food? Wallpaper. Oh. Is it plumbed? Oh! Good thing I'm not thirsty. Not even screwed in. Lethal Scientist says, I love how scathing Kelso is about construction. The hammer. Nope. Send back. Go back. Back out. Right there. <laughs> this violin is great. Oh, something over there. 
I expect a bogeyman to jump out at any moment. There we go. What's this? Nothing. Wow. Is it in the garage? No. Comment about single paned windows? Nope. Oh, no window at all. Okay. Just walk right through. Okay, well, upstairs we go. Okay, maybe he has a comment about radiators. Nope, nothing about radiators. Now, about that cup of sugar. There's a camera. There's a camera light. Boots, paint, but who would be working on this house so late at night? Is it the back room? No. You lose something, Mac? I thought these private eye types were all wise guys with smart mouths. Looks like the snappy repartee has all dried up. Get on with it. What's your hurry, Mac? You got some place to go? You ever do the cat and mouse routine without a gun in your hand? Now that's more like it. Let's put a few oh. guys in that ah. yeah. Okay. Three Look, meatheads with an area of brain. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Three. Okay. In the face, I'm just in the gut. Out, out, out like a light. I'm glad your buddies are leaving me alone for this one. Oh. You're a worn tough guy. You should learn to take a hint. Get him downstairs and into the trunk. This game was rigged from the start. Sure, he turned up all right. He's wishing he didn't. He's in the trunk. He's going nowhere. The boys introduce themselves. <laughs> what do you want done with him, Mr. Monroe? Ooh. Yeah, I know a good place. Dropping names. Pick up a shovel and a pick on the way. It's up in the hills behind Griffith Park. We'll deal with that German bitch next. <laughs> Big Al says, at least you're not driving, so that's a plus. Well, that's true. There's always a silver lining. They might as well be our chauffeurs. Hey, buddy, did the car just get lighter? Elsa. Uh, okay. Well, there's a vehicle. Can I get in that vehicle? Should I wait or go over here? I mean, that vehicle is stopped. Yeah, let's get in that vehicle. Hey, thanks for getting out. What the hell? Sorry, pal. Desperate times. What were you saying about that silver lining? Oh, man, now I gotta drive. Watch it. Get me out of here. It's a fence. No. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. No. <laughs> no, I can't. It's crap. Okay, let's go this way. Oh, and right behind me, too. Oh. Monroe owns the city. Owns the cops. I need to find Elsa. Hey, off my tail. What's your problem? Oh, 
sorry. I know I can run over land posts. Oh, but not. Oh, one down. Hey, 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 hey! Out of my way! How come these fences? Oh, shut the This is so stupid. Oh. On the grass. No, sorry. I didn't mean it. There we are. Okay. On the street. Oh, dodging the cars. Here we go. Uh, Elsa's apartment. Yeah, that's the way. If this car can handle it, holy cow. It's about done. Sorry. Sorry. Accident. Oh, and they're right up on me again. All right, moving, 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 moving faster. They're shooting at me, but they're far away. They're gonna miss. Is that the last of them? I hope that's the last of them. Get to Elsa's. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. Dang it! I ran over some people. That's not gonna look good. Up. Oh, got a job. It's okay. It's just a little oil leak. And smoke. It's okay. I'm there. I made it. I, if I can... Ah. Oh. He staggers. <laughs> I, I really messed him up. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> oh, poor guy. That's right. Wash your face. You're meeting a lady. You can't show up in blood. Still carrying that army 45, Cole. Ooh, ooh, a couple steps down there. For God's sake, Cole! Call an ambulance! Is that it? Is that end? Oh! City damage. Oh, vehicle damage. Look at that. No, no, stop. There. 200, 300. Okay, so a uh, couple grand, well, close to a, a little over a grand. Man, that hurt. Well, there we go. Uh, so that's two cases down for L.A. Noir. I got the footage in the can. Let me just stop. No, I'll stop that later. Um, yeah, I should probably save the rest for later. I don't want to get through the entire rest of the game tonight. It's already 11.10 my time. Uh, so there you go. Thanks for joining me for this impromptu stream of L.A. Noir. I got a lot of good footage in the can that I can use for a couple more lore videos coming up uh, this week. So new L.A. Noir lore video on Tuesday, probably. And then the next one will be on the next Tuesday. That's kind of what my schedule has been recently. But then I've got some more Fallout 3 content to get through. So I'm probably going to be shooting some of that later tonight. So thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I'll have the replays up on YouTube here in a little bit, though I've been broadcasting for... Oh, really? Has it only been a couple of hours? Felt like longer. Well, YouTube's not going to have a hard time getting this, uh, getting this on uh, processing this footage on YouTube. So it'll be up on YouTube in probably about an hour or so, so you can watch the replay. Anyway, thanks again for joining me. I really appreciate everyone who, who came on by. And if you want to make sure you don't miss my next live stream on Twitch, you should probably follow me on Twitter. I announce on Twitter whenever I go live on Twitch. So, again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more, more content in the coming week. And I'll see you all very soon with more brand new videos.